Hello, my name is Tony Gutierrez from AMD Research, and today I will be presenting an overview of AMD's open source Gen 5 GPU model. During today's talk, I will first introduce the Radeon Open Compute Platform, or Rockham, AMD's open source software platform for HPC and hyperscale class GPU computing. Next, I will give an overview of the GCN GPU machine ISA supported in Gen 5, and finally, I will discuss how the hardware software interface and GPU pipeline are modeled in Gen 5. As we demonstrated in our HPCA 2018 paper, modeling GPUs at the machine ISA level is important, and it is our hope that the availability of our GPU simulator will foster AMD relevant research and collaboration in the HPC GPU space. Other talks during today's workshop will be discussing other components in Gen 5, so we will be focusing on the GPU model in this talk. Let's now dive into the first item on today's agenda, a bit of background on the GPU programming model and some terminology. Throughout this talk, we will be referencing relevant source files in the Gem5 code base. This figure shows Gem5's directory structure. The bulk of the GPU model's code is in the GPU compute directory. The GPU's memory protocol is implemented in source memruby and source memruby protocol. GPU specific device models are in source devhsa. The ISA implementation is in source arcgcn3 and various configuration and run scripts are in the configs directory. The configuration files set up the system topology by connecting various compute and memory components, while the run scripts allow the user to set values for various parameters exposed by the model components and to launch simulations. For the remainder of this talk, any files referenced are in the GPU compute directory unless otherwise stated. <clears throat> These figures give a high level view of a GPU. In our terminology, the GPU cores are called compute units or CUs. The instruction cache is referred to as the SQC or sequencer cache. The L1D cache is called the TCP or texture cache per pipe. The L2 cache is the TCC or texture cache per channel. And finally, the shared memory, sometimes called scratch pad, is known as the local data share or LDS. Our GPUs also feature scalar data caches and all of these components are modeled in our Gen5 GPU simulator. From the programming model perspective, we use the Heterogeneous Systems Architecture, or HSA, abstractions. HSA is a standards body that aims to provide a unified software ecosystem for heterogeneous compute. HSA provides lightweight abstractions of the GPU hardware that capture basic OpenCL constructs. A single thread is referred to as a work item. A group of threads that execute together in lockstep on a single SIMD unit is called a wavefront, and a collection of wavefronts that execute together are known as work groups. All threads in a kernel can be collectively called a grid. <laughs> Using CUDA terminology, a work group is called a thread block, a wavefront is called a warp, and work items are simply referred to as threads. Wavefronts can be thought of as a single wide thread that abstracts the SIMD hardware because all work items within a wavefront share a program counter and must execute in lockstep. Wavefronts may also have scalar instructions, both memory and ALU, mixed in with the SIMD and vector memory instructions. When work items diverge in a wavefront, they are simply masked off, which results in SIMD lanes being underutilized. A SIMD lane can be considered a work item from the hardware point of view. Wavefronts within a single work group must all be dispatched to the same CU together, and there are various synchronization methods for communicating within wavefronts and work groups. Work groups within the same kernel may not be dispatched together, and synchronizing across work groups can lead to deadlock as forward progress may not be guaranteed. Now let us move on to the next item in our agenda, the GPU hardware software interface. As mentioned earlier, Rockham is our software platform for high performance compute on GPUs. Rockham consists of a Clang LLVM heterogeneous compiler for CPUs and GPUs compiler and runtime libraries, and device drivers. Rockham provides the API and low-level primitives for supporting the HSA standard. The compiler allows for single-source CPU GPU applications written in extended C++. Notably, the compiler libraries provide high-level APIs for managing GPU resources, providing synchronization primitives, and kernel launch. It abstracts low-level runtime and driver calls. However, users can still link against the low-level runtime libraries if needed. The runtime layer abstracts the GPU hardware, including its task queues, and provides process isolation and resource management. The runtime allows for user mode queuing, which aids in fast dispatch of kernels. The GPU is a hardware software co-designed machine. The command processor, also known as the CP, 
aids in implementing the HSA standard, launching kernels, and more. And in conjunction with the ISA and runtime software, it provides a rich application binary interface, otherwise known as an ABI, that aids in the programmability of GPUs. The Gem 5 models that implement the high-level hardware components, such as the compute unit, shader, and CP, are defined in the files referenced on this slide. From the programmer's point of view, kernel launch is the primary interface to the GPU, and here we give a detailed view of the kernel launch flow for a GPU in Gem 5. The hardware maintains several queues for managing kernels, otherwise known as tasks, the hardware is responsible for scheduling tasks from the various queues as well as launching tasks to the GPU. The runtime maintains software queues on a per process basis, and there may be many more software queues than there are hardware queues. The low level software and hardware are responsible for mapping software queues to hardware queues and scheduling them. Architected query language packets, AQL, are defined by the HSA standard and provide a command interface for the GPU. These packets essentially define a kernel and its requirements, such as the number of work items, code object address, register file size, and LDS and other memory requirements. When an AQL packet is enqueued into an AQL queue, the GPU is notified, and it can be considered for scheduling. This is achieved by sending a signal, which is an atomic memory operation, to the GPU that triggers the packet processing component of the CP to read the packet from memory. The packet processor parses the packet and takes the appropriate action to initiate the command on the GPU. Typically, these packets are kernel launch packets, but there are other types of packets too. BMA commands, barrier packets, and more. The source for the HSA processing uh, components are here. The emulated driver is implemented in this file. The packet format is defined in this file, and the queue format is defined in this file. After the packet processor has parsed the packet, the next step for kernel launch is forming and dispatching workgroups to the CUs. Workgroup dispatch is resource limited, that is, there must be sufficient scalar and vector register file space, LDS memory if it's required by the kernel, and wavefront slots free on the CU to meet the workgroup's demand. If there are not enough resources, the dispatcher will track in-flight workgroups and launch them as resources are freed. Once all workgroups from a kernel have been dispatched and completed, the CP will free resources and alert the host that the kernel has finished. The dispatcher source can be found in dispatcher.cc and HH, and the format for an AQL queue entry is defined in hsaqentry.hh. As mentioned previously, the GPU is a hardware software co-design machine with a rich ABI. The ABI state is primarily maintained in the register file, for example, kernel argument base addresses are stored in specific registers. In this example, they're stored in the scalar registers 0 and 1. These registers are populated by the CP based on metadata it reads directly from the kernel's code object, which is part of the binary generated by the compiler. However, some state is maintained in memory and some state is maintained directly in the hardware, such as the wavefront context. We will discuss wavefront context when discussing instruction fetch later in this talk. The metadata obtained from the GPU kernel binary is stored in the kernel code.hh file. The GCN3 GPU ISA is what is currently supported in Gem 5, and this table gives a breakdown of the types of instructions supported in the ISA. Broadly, there are five oper operation categories, vector ALU, scalar ALU, vector memory, scalar memory, and branch and message instructions. The specification for the GCN3 ISA is publicly available at the link on this slide. The LDS is a type of vector memory that is on chip and managed by the software. Scalar instructions are useful for doing base address calculations and handling branching. The workhorse of the GPU is the SIMD unit, which executes vector ALU instructions. The GCN3 instructions are implemented in opencodings.hh and cc, which provides common functionality for instructions within the same op type such as VLU or SALU, and instructions.hh and CC, which implements instruction-specific functions for all the instructions in the ISA. To decouple the ISA implementation from the core architectural models, we follow the Gem5 convention of separating out the ISA implementation details from generic ISA API. The generic GPU state is stored in the wavefront and GPU blocks, such as the CU. 
The ISA imp implementation handles instruction decoding, operand assignment, and manages various ISA specific state. Most importantly, the execute method for GPU instructions must be implemented by each instruction with their specific instruction execution semantics. The GPU execution context and instruction classes define the API used by the core model to interact with the ISA implementation. This allows a single GPU core model design to be extensible to other ISAs. The relevant source for these files is listed here. Now we move on to the final section of my talk, the Gem5 GPU core model. The GPU pipeline in Gem5 is a timing model is conceptually five stages. We will go through each of these stages in more detail in the upcoming slides. One key thing to note is that our model follows Gem5's execute and execute philosophy. That is, instructions fetch memory, gather operands, and execute in the corresponding stage where these actions actually take place. This contrasts with models that execute functionally first and provide back-end timing estimates later. This means that flaws in the model will likely trigger real bugs in simulated applications. Here is a high-level block diagram of the Graphics Core Next, also known as GCN, architecture, showing the relevant pipeline stages and blocks, as well as their corresponding models and Gen5 source tree. The CU has both SIMD vector ALUs and scalar ALU, as well as vector and scalar register files. The LDS memory is local to the CU. Broadly, the front end of the CU manages the state for all wavefronts that are active on the CU. Wavefronts can come from multiple work groups. Each cycle, all the ready wavefronts present their next instruction, and the arbitration logic chooses a winning wavefront to dispatch to each functional unit. Instructions are issued in order. However, once instructions are issued, they may execute out of order with, with respect to other functional units because all dependencies must be resolved before the instruction can issue. Wavefront context slots are implemented in Wavefront HH and CC. The GCN3 decoder is in GPU decoder HH and decoder.cc under the GCN3 directory. The LDS memory state is in LDS state HH and CC. The GPU's memory protocol, Viper, is in the GPU Viper TCP and TCC and SQC SM files under the Ruby protocol directory. The scalar and vector register files are in scalar register file HH and CC and vector register file HH and CC, respectively. In GCN3, each CU has multiple SIMD units that execute instructions from different wavefronts, and each SIMD can support several wavefront contexts. A single scalar ALU and branch unit are shared by all wavefronts. The LDS, TCC, SQC, and scalar cache are shared by multiple CUs and each CU has a private TCP. The front end of the pipeline is responsible for arbitrating instruction fetches for the various wavefronts and contains the wavefront context for all wavefronts on the CU. The wavefront context primarily consists of the wavefronts program counter and buffered instructions. The instruction fetch stage also contains raw instruction data fetched from the iCache. Subsequent fetches to the same cache line may be served from the fetch stage without going to the iCache until the prefetch data has been exhausted. The fetch unit will typically prefetch, in a next line fashion, the next few instruction cache lines. The prefetch depth is configurable, and the GPU instruction fetch is implemented in fetch unit HH and CC and fetch stage HH and CC. The next few stages are responsible for dependence checking and instruction arbitration. At each cycle, each wavefront presents the next instruction to be executed. If there is fetch data available, otherwise the wavefront will be stalled waiting on instruction fetch. The dependence checking stage determines whether there are any de data dependencies in flight for the ready instruction, and if not, marks the instruction as ready. Once each wavefront has presented their next ready instruction, the scheduler arbitrates among the wavefronts competing for each different instruction type, such as the VLU or SALU. An instruction of each type can be issued on every cycle. Before instructions can execute, they must read their operands from the register file. Instructions are queued up, and when their operands have been read, they can dispatch to their respective functional units. A wavefront's instructions are issued from the scheduling stage in order, and instructions are dispatched to their functional units in order. However, it is possible that a wavefront's instructions can execute out of order if they are mapped to different functional units. For example, 
If a Wavefront issues a VLU instruction followed by an SALU instruction, it is possible the SALU instruction will execute first if the SALU is under a lighter load than the VLU. This is fine because dependence checking is done before instructions are issued, which guarantees that there are no hazards across functional units. For dependent instructions that use the same functional unit, forwarding paths or pipeline stalls will guarantee hazards are resolved. As mentioned previously, the GPU has a scalar and vector register file. Each wavefront will have private scalar and vector register file state that is allocated at kernel launch. In the model in GEM5, a simple register manager is used to allocate registers, and each register is 32 bits. For the vector register file, each re register has 64 elements. Once instructions are dispatched, they can execute and write their results back to the register file. However, memory instructions gather operands and perform address calculation. Then they are enqueued in separate pipelines for memory requests. There are three separate memory pipelines, two for vector memory, the LDS and global memory pipelines, and one for scalar memory. After executing, the memory requests generated by the memory instructions are initiated by the memory pipeline and the pipeline also tracks in-flight memory requests and is responsible for writing back loaded data. Beyond the execute method, memory instructions must implement the initiate ACK and complete ACK API. The initiate ACK function initiates a memory request and sends it to the Ruby memory system. Complete ACK will be called once a memory request has returned from Ruby and takes the appropriate action. For example, writing back data to the register file for loads and decrementing the number of in-flight memory operations. For handling load-to-use dependencies, as well as preventing write-after-write -write hazards, a simple stall mechanism called a wait count is used for memory instructions. The wait count instruction waits until the number of in-flight memory instructions of each type fall below some specified number before the pipeline can continue executing for a given wavefront. Therefore, only wavefronts that are not stalled on a wait count can issue instructions, and this is detected in the dependence checking portion of the pipeline discussed previously. The example code snippet shows how wait counts are used. Here, the load instruction marked by the red number one will write to V4. A later vector ALU shift instruction marked by a red three will read from V4. The wait count instruction marked by the red two will stall until at most three vector memory instructions are in flight. When the load completes, the complete ACK API will decrement this count. And since the memory instructions are executed in order, it is guaranteed that if only three or fewer vector memory instructions are in flight, the load to V4 will be completed by the time the shift instruction issues. Vector memory instructions additionally go through a coalescing block. Because each thread in a wavefront is generating a byte address, there can be up to 64 separate requests to memory. However, for well-designed GPU codes, memory accesses are typically, typically contiguous and therefore may be coalesced into a smaller number of requests if many threads are accessing the same cache line. The LDS is a software-managed vector memory structure and it's primarily used for synchronizing within a workgroup or as a scratch pad memory. The base coalescer is in GPU coalescer.hh and CC, and the Viper protocol specific coalescing functionality is in Viper coalescer.hh and CC. Here we see a more detailed view of memory coalescing. The coalescer receives byte aligned memory requests and will attempt to coalesce these by aligning the request to a cache line and consolidating all requests to the same cache line. The coalescer only coalesces memory requests from the same instruction from within a single wavefront. This reduces memory bandwidth, and on a response, the coalescer notifies all waiters on the same cache line. In summary, we have given an overview of AMD's open source GEM5 GPU model. This model supports a state-of-the-art GPU runtime as well as the GPU's machine ISA. The simulator models a full CPU GPU system, allowing for a simulation of complex heterogeneous systems running advanced applications. The model is continually updated with new features, enhancements, and bug fixes, and we encourage contributions from the community. The source is available at Gem5's Google source page. The Gem5 GPU model is the result of the efforts of many people over many years. I would like to acknowledge everyone who has contributed to the project over the years. Thank you for your time.